Okay, hello everyone. This is Brianna. Most of you probably know me from the practice here, but I am Dr. Bruin, Dr. Masters Physician Assistant. Um, and I am going to be pretty much the only one here in the office doing the treatment. So I'm excited to be able to bring the information to you on this platform via a webinar so you can hang out at home and listen, listen about the treatment. So um, basically we're reviewing our new Intima treatment, the vaginal rejuvenation laser using our CO2 laser machine. So the agenda for today, after my slide pops up here, We'll kind of overview what we're going to go over today. There we go. Okay, so first of all, we're just going to go over what is Intima, you know, um, who is it used for, that sort of thing. The next thing we'll review is basically what issues can you treat with this. There's actually several issues that patients are surprised that you can treat with this with this machine. We're also going to go over how it works and why it works. And then also I'm going to go over with you what to expect, you know, what you need to do to prepare for the treatment, what you can expect during and after the treatment as well. So on this slide, you can see um, the picture on the left is the internal handpiece and the one on the right is the external handpiece. So there are basically three different areas, anatomical areas, that this machine can treat. The first is the vaginal canal internally. So um, that can, basically the idea behind CO2 is that it tightens, it builds collagen, and it resurfaces. So internally, the main, main thing you're going to be noticing is internal tightening. Uh, the handpiece is sterile and disposable, so it's just one use for each patient. The other areas that you can treat are really more externally, so the external, external labia majora and minora for discoloration and atrophy and just improvement of the texture and firmness of that area. And then the introitus, which is basically just the opening from the external to the internal canal, that can actually be tightened and um, decreased in diameter as well. This slide just basically shows um, the kind of a, a breakdown and organization of everything that can be treated with the laser. So the first one, like I mentioned, was just the labia rejuvenation of the internal and external labia. Um, mostly this is for aesthetics. There's also some implications for uh, if, you know, leggings or workout clothes or even just jeans and things like that um, can pinch on that, air, pinch on that area um, and things like that. The internal vaginal canal tightening um, urinary incontinence, which is, there's another slide that I'll go over later in the slideshow that talks about how that's treatable. The vaginal atrophy of the internal canal that can lead to dryness and things like this. This is mostly in, in postmenopausal women, these symptoms. Post-radiation dryness is very similar in symptoms to menopause, so it can also be indicated for that. I'll give you just a couple of seconds to look over if you want to keep reading through that table. So the next couple of slides, we're just going to go into detail of why you would want to do Intima and what what the patient proper or excuse me the patient selection process is like. So um, overall, what Intima is treating is basically vulvovaginal atrophy. So the definition of atrophy is just a decrease in size or a wasting away of a body tissue. So this is very common in women, but it's actually, treatment is rarely sought, I think, partially just because people aren't aware that there's something out there to treat their issues. It's usually caused by general aging or a decrease in estrogen, in particular in postmenopausal women. The symptoms that you can see, the vulva tissue or the external labia, can decrease in elasticity and become saggy or develop wrinkles, and the texture and color can also change. The internal vaginal canal can become thinner and drier, you can lose elasticity, and it can actually become more fragile, which can lead to painful intercourse and things like that. There's also a reduction in blood flow and vaginal secretions, leading to, again, dryness, a decrease in sensation, and an increase in discomfort. We all see commercials about probiotics and things like that, so a lot of us have the understanding about the good and bad 
bacteria in the vagina and in the gut, things like that. So this can actually help balance the pH, which may have implications in, again, secretions and comfort, as well as things like UTIs, things like that. So uh, the very last point there just describes the symptoms that we've kind of talked about that can come about from all of these issues. And then the picture here just shows the normal vaginal mucosa, how the cells are thicker and the whole lining is thicker and it just looks healthier versus the thin, flat, atrophied tissue on this side. So vaginal canal laxity is basically just a relaxation of the canal that can occur most commonly postpartum or also with menopause and age just as our collagen denatures and we, we lose that normal elasticity that, that we had when we were younger. It can, it can stretch to the elastic limits, causing looseness and a decrease or loss in friction and decreased sensation. So urinary incontinence is something that plays a huge role in quality of life for a lot of people. So um, it's more common. I, I hear about it a lot more than you would think, even, you know, even in younger patients. So the most common thing that I hear about from patients is stress urinary incontinence. So when you do anything that increases the pressure in your abdomen, so whether it be coughing or a big laugh or, you know, if you're exercising, you're doing CrossFit or something and hopping up and down or running, jogging on stairs, things like that, and you may, know, you may feel, you know, a little bit of leakage or even if you don't feel it, maybe at the end of the day, um, you know, you go to shower and you may notice a little wet spot in the underwear, things like that. Urge incontinence is another category. This is more related to um, whenever you feel the urge to urinate, it may be overpowering. You feel like you can't make it to the restroom on time, and then you may notice a little bit of leakage after that. Mixed, obviously, is just a combination of the two. So how does this work? Basically, the mechanism of action for, um, for this treatment. There are two different hand pieces. You can see the top photo shows the internal handpiece, how it's connected to, um, it's a 360 degree rotating articulated arm that makes it very comfortable for that internal handpiece to swivel around in a circle and be able to treat every angle of the internal canal. The external canal you can see here on the bottom, it just fits flush against the skin and then um, this grid of laser beams are just penetrated into the skin. Um, this is actually what your tissue would look like after treatment. You just see these little white grid marks along. Um, and this is a good opportunity to just go over the anatomy that we talk about. Um, some people aren't aware of every, what every little, um, every little definition means. So the introitus or the opening is just this portion right here. Um, and then this is the labia minora, that mucosal part right here. And then the labia majora is the part, the external part that um, is the drier protective part on the outside. So why do we choose CO2? Um, basically, it's the gold standard in tissue remodeling. It's the most, one of the most versatile mechanisms that we can use. So it works via ablation, which basically just means resurfacing from the, from the outside, vaporizing small parts of the tissue to remove it from, from the surface of the skin. It forms new collagen and elastin, and it also tightens collagen. It can prolong the life of collagen. It can actually also bring about new vessels because whenever your body is healing, it recruits new tiny little vessels to help, to help that heal. So it can um, bring about new, new vessels there. We choose in most of, our, um, most of our treatments, we choose the fractionated technique, which if you go back to this photo, you can see um, each white hole here is basically where the laser has gone in and then surrounding that tissue is healthy tissue that hasn't been treated. So that actually allows for faster and better healing and then it also allows each of these penetration points can actually go a little bit deeper and you can get a more, in a more aggressive treatment. If it's surrounded by healthy tissue, it allows it to heal faster and leads to less downtime and things like that. So we have lots of experience using CO2. We're used to doing it on the face, neck, and chest. We've been doing that for a long time. This is the exact same machine and technology, but it just have it has a different application for this area of the body now. So this slide is actually showing the difference in our CO2 machine versus other CO2 machines. So 
Ours is actually here on the right, and then these, um, these are other lasers. So what this is showing is the difference in how the CO2 beam is entered into the skin and how long it stays in the skin. So in our machine, you can see it's a nice clean entrance and then it goes right back out and there's no lagging heat or laser penetration out here. On this side, you can see it goes in and then there's a little bit of lag time, which basically just means that there's more heat staying in your skin for longer, which can have implications for longer healing times and also more, a little bit more discomfort during treatment as well. Um, we used to have a laser that used this form of excitation and I could definitely tell a difference with downtime and patient reports of discomfort whenever we switch to the new, it's a Centeron brand laser. So what can you expect, you know, um, before treatment, things like that. So obviously you need to have something to treat. This list of indications over here, reasons for doing the treatment. Over here, there's some important things to, to make sure that are in order before the treatment. We definitely want you to have an up-to-date pap smear. We want to make sure that you don't have any ongoing issues that we could worsen with the laser or exacerbate. Along those lines, no active infections that we could worsen with, with this treatment. You do want, if you're treating the external area, you do want that to be free of hair, so just shaved within the day or two before treatment. We do do a vaginal canal exam, exam right before treatment to make sure that there's nothing abnormal. And we pre-treat everybody with oral antiviral medication just to be safe. Even if you've never had a symptom of even you know cold sores or anything like that, we give everybody this as a precaution. Uh, obviously, we have um, some indications and some medications that can actually be risky uh, that we have people review, check and double check just to make sure you're not on any of those so it's going to be the safest possible treatment for you. These are lists of possible reasons to consider avoiding treatment. It doesn't mean that if you've had one or some of these that you can't do treatment, but it's just something that if you experience, if you've experienced some of these, we want to make sure that we review that closely and that it's safe to go ahead with treatment. Probably the most common things that I've seen with patients that we want to be that we want to be careful with. The biggest thing is probably concurrent illnesses such as diabetes or anything that can affect your healing, like autoimmune diseases. Um, another thing may be, you know, obviously pregnancy and nursing, we want to be super careful with that. We don't want to take any risks with that. Um, keloids are listed on here. Keloids actually can be worsened a lot of times by something like this. So you just want to, if you have a history of keloids, we want to evaluate you carefully for that. Um, Accutane is one of the biggest medications that you cannot be on any time period around this treatment. Um, steroids, and then, like I said, there's that other list of medications that we have. Excessively tan skin can lead to issues with healing. It can actually burn your skin from the treatment if you're tanned. So even spray tan, things like that, we have to be careful with. So what can you expect during the procedure? Um, I This is one thing that it's nice you don't have to pre-treat with. With CO2 on the face, a lot of times we offer pre-medication with some stronger pain pills or a Valium or things like that. So it helps control your pain with that, but you do need a driver and it's a hassle. With this, it's actually very tolerable, so you don't need any sort of pretreatment like that. Just 400 to 800 milligrams of ibuprofen uh, 30 minutes before the procedure will make it very tolerable and actually help after the procedure as well to decrease that inflammation a little quicker. So you will be lying on a table with your legs in stirrups covered with a blanket, exactly like at the gynecologist's office. We, if we're treating externally, we put on topical numbing cream for maybe 15 minutes or so. And then we start with the internal handpiece. It feels very similar to a vaginal ultrasound probe if you've ever had something like that, except for um, we, you know, not, probably not as much pressure as that even. The um, pulses during the internal treatment are actually very minimally felt. Uh, most people can't really feel anything at all. It goes by really quick as well. It takes maybe five to 10 minutes. And then we would move on to the external treatment. It's very tolerable with numbing cream. A lot of my patients have compared this to laser hair removal. It actually, to a lot of people, has felt better because we have the addition of that numbing cream that takes away most of the painful sensation. That portion is also pretty quick, maybe about 10 minutes. So you may be in the office a total of 30 minutes or so, a little bit longer if you know if you have questions beforehand and that sort of thing. 
So what can you expect after the treatment? Mild redness and a little bit of swelling is absolutely expected and normal. Um, some people will prefer to have some sort of mild moisturizer or a water-based lubricant to apply, <clears throat> excuse me, for soothing of the tissues. I definitely recommend ice packs. We have some little circular gel packs that we keep here in the office and we can give you one of those before you leave, but that just helps to decrease that heat sensation after we're done. But most people really report minimal discomfort, especially after the first few hours or after the first day or so, it just continues to get better and better. The area should obviously be kept clean and gently washed a couple times a day just with a mild cleanser. You can notice a small amount of buildup or almost like a, a really fine film on the area, especially the, um, the external treatment, you'll notice that. So if you notice a yellow um, crust, you know, whenever you're wiping or washing, that's normal. You do need to avoid anything internal for seven days. It's extremely important for healing. So no intercourse, tampons, or douching for seven days. Um, Mild spotting kind of along that line can be normal. So if you notice that, definitely no tampons for that. So keep pads or panty liners on hand just to make sure that um, you're able to not get that on your underwear or anything like that. A lot of people have reported urination can be a little bit uncomfortable, just a little bit of mild stinging in the first day or two. So it helps most people to have some gentle baby wipes or wet wipes on hand to use instead of that dry toilet paper. Of course, if you have any abnormal pain or bleeding or fever, fever, we want you to call us and let us know, but that should be really rare. Um, there will be a few restrictions on your activity, like I mentioned, definitely the internal restrictions, but most patients are able to return to their daily activities in the next day or two. Uh, you will want to follow up with us in about seven days just to make sure you're healing okay. So the treatment protocol. A lot of people ask, you know, how long are they spaced apart? How, um, how many do I need? That sort of thing. So first of all, as with all of your treatments that you do here, we want to do a full consultation. Review your medical history, your medications, make sure that you're the right candidate and that it's safe for you, that sort of thing. Three treatments are usually recommended to start out with, and we've seen phenomenal results with three. There may be some cases where you may want to do a few more than that, but we've seen great results just with that recommended three. They're spaced four to six weeks apart. On average, four weeks is totally fine. Um, you may consider a maintenance session around one year just to maintain that collagen that we've, we've built and remodeled through your initial sessions. So next, we actually have a patient on hand that is willing to share her experience with you guys. So she's going to come over and just kind of tell you about her experience that she had with the treatment. Hello everybody, my name is Dee. Um, I have been in menopause for the past few years and have been experiencing some symptoms um, such as vaginal dryness for which I was using coconut oil because it was getting to the point uh, that it was, it was miserable um, at times in my clothing. Uh, and then I was having some issues with urinary leakage, especially when I would laugh or cough really hard. So a couple of years ago, um, my gynecologist had recommended that I consider a non-surgical vaginal rejuvenation. So when Premier Plastic Surgery and Aesthetics acquired the equipment, um, I decided to go forward with my treatment and chose to do both the internal and the external treatments at the same time. Um, the treatment uh, themselves or itself was relatively painless due to the topical numbing cream. And I felt like taking 800 milligrams of ibuprofen prior to the procedure really helped with the, the swelling. Uh, after the numbness wore off, um, there was a little discomfort and swelling, but it, it generally only lasted about 24 hours. Uh, during that time, I would just continue my ibuprofen, and um, I would also use some little ice packs in that area, but having the baby wipes on hand was a, a very good thing to have, especially during the first 24 to 48 hours. Um, I was very impressed with the results. I saw an improvement in my symptoms about two weeks after my first treatment. And now I'm happy to say that after all three of my treatments have finished, my vaginal dryness 
and my urinary routine are completely gone. Uh, I am extremely happy that I finally decided to go forward with these treatments, and I'm very thankful to Brianna and to Premier Plastic Surgery and Aesthetics for helping me to get past this period of time in my life. So thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So next we're going to open up the um, chat session so that you can ask some questions. So for me, I don't know what it looks like on your screen, but there's a little blue bar at the top. And if you hover over that, there's a little chat bubble. So if you open that up, um, and start typing in your questions, I will be able to answer those. And what I'll do is I'll just, they're anonymous, um, and then I'll read them out loud so that everybody can hear the question, and then I'll try to answer them for you. So I'll give everybody a second to think of some questions. Okay, awesome. So a couple have already come in. So, um, one of the first questions somebody asked, and this is a good question, does it hurt to have intercourse after the treatment? Um, actually, during, you know, during the first seven days, I'm sure it would, while you're still healing, so definitely adhere to that um, restriction afterwards, but this can actually help with painful intercourse. So whether, you know, whether it be from dryness or atrophy or whatever's causing that for you, it actually can end up helping with that. So the answer to that is no after the initial healing period. Um, good question that I haven't mentioned yet, the cost. So normally for the series of three, it's $2,500. Um, but actually for the whole month of February, we'll be having a sale 20% off. So that'd be $2,000 for your series of three treatments. Um, it looks like somebody else is typing. So how long does it last? Um, so I can never say anything that we do here is permanent, but you know, you may expect up to two, possibly even two and a half, three years of results. Um, and, that, and that's taking into account that you may be doing that maintenance session annually just to keep your results kind of where they were. Um, so that would be on average. You know, some people, if you age, if you age faster for, for some reason, or various, you know, cancer, just various things can affect your tissues, but on average, probably two years or so. Um, how soon after childbirth can I have this done? That's a good question. Um, I actually asked this question of our reps because we have some people here in the office that are pregnant and they are patients here in the office, excuse me, that are pregnant and they're you know, ready, ready to go as soon as they have the baby. So um, I would, I would wait six months just to make sure you're totally healed and um, and and everything's okay with that. Can you tighten internally too much? Um, that's a good question. I would, I wouldn't expect necessarily, but if we did, honestly, I would probably be able to tell because the internal handpiece wouldn't be. Um, probably wouldn't insert as comfortably, um, but you know, there's always a there can be a fine line basically between not doing enough and doing too much treatment. So absolutely, our office errs on the on the side of safety and caution with with things like that. So there's some more questions. Let me just scroll up and make sure I didn't miss any of these. Um, how frequently can you have treatment? So every four weeks, like that one slide said, you know. Obviously, if you come in at four weeks and you don't feel like you're totally back to normal, we can we can push that out. Or if you know life interrupts you and you're not able to do it right at four weeks, totally fine. We can do it six, eight weeks, or whatever works with your schedule. <clears throat> um, can you treat over scars in the area like an episiotomy scar? Yes, absolutely. That's pretty common in childbirth. So um, for those that may not know that term, episiotomy is basically where they have to aid in the vaginal birth and um, use a scalpel to increase the width of the opening. So that can lead to some scarring, of course. So 
Yes, I've actually treated that in one of our patients and it, it worked really well because in that area, it's basically posterior or behind the vaginal canal. So the scarring isn't just the thick scar that you think of with normal scar tissue. It actually can lead to a little bit of laxity. So this will be able to tighten that area and make it a lot more comfortable for patients if you have that issue. Oh, another, another question about scars, just kind of along those lines that I saw. Um, they said they meant they saw that slide about the keloid scarring. Um, that is just usually I don't recommend messing with keloid scars because they can be notorious for even if you treat them temporarily, they can come back the same or even worse. So if you're prone to keloids or especially if you have a keloid in the area, we want to for sure discuss all your options options with that. Okay. Someone asked how long the discount is offered. I think I mentioned that, but it's the whole month of February. Um, how long before you can get in the water in the summertime? So that's a good question. I would say probably definitely a week. Um, if, it's some, if it's a bath after a week, it might be okay, but be careful still for probably a couple weeks after that, you know, in the lake or the pool, just because the lake has, you know, it can be dirty, and then the pool obviously can have chlorine and chemicals and things like that. So that's a good question. Um, well, I need to take time off of work. So this will this will probably vary. I've had a couple patients that are up and, and ready to go, you know, do whatever they need to immediately after, especially if they have a little bit of ice, they're fine. Um, I've had a couple patients that felt a little uncomfortable for the first few hours. So I would probably at least plan on having the rest of the day off on the day of treatment and then potentially um, the next day, just depending, you know, things that maybe would give you a sign that you might need the next day if you're prone to swelling or if you're prone to having sensitive skin that gets irritated with things. Those are two things that might give you a heads up. You'd be a little irritated. Um, also, you know, after your first treatment, you may kind of be able to feel out how, how you did and be able to adjust your schedule accordingly after that for your subsequent two treatments. Um, is is how young is too young for this treatment so generally most of our things we do here we just say 18 or older um in this case you know i've actually we've actually had some phone calls asking about younger patients just due to particular issues with you know with that with that patient um so with parental consent depending on the issue we could definitely clear somebody younger than 18 um, it would just depend. So you're always welcome to call and ask, come in for a consultation just to just to hear the information. Okay, so this patient asks, I have darker skin tone. Can I get the treatment? That's a good question and because especially CO2 on the face, a lot of times you may hear us say, you know, if you have a darker skin tone or a very olive skin tone, you're gonna be at a higher risk for hyperpigmentation of the skin. Um, and also, every, you know, if every once in a while there's lasers out there that are actually attracted to pigment, this laser in particular is actually attracted to water. So I don't think it would be unsafe to treat darker pigmented skin, um, depending on how dark it is, but you do need to know that the risk of hyperpigmentation will be higher for you. So basically what that means is in response to treatment, our body can turn um, dark brown produced pigment just in the treatment area. So if you're just looking for treatment, obviously of the internal tightening and things like that, the hyperpigmentation would not matter there. Externally, if you're looking for tightening and reduction you know, in, in texture and things like that, um, as long as you're aware of the possibility of the pigment getting a little bit darker there, it would probably be okay. Again, always better to have a consultation and talk about your specific case in particular. Um, somebody asked how long the pain lasts after the treatment. So that will vary. On average, I would say, you know, no longer than probably 48 hours would you be experiencing, you know, a noticeable discomfort. Obviously, you can be a little bit irritated, maybe a little bit swollen for up to a week or so, but the major discomfort that you're going to feel is going to be in this definitely in the first three to six hours and then potentially up to 24 hours. And then after that, most people have reported that, that they feel fine. Does it help with internal dryness? Yes, absolutely. Um, it, it can change the pH. It can help with the atrophy of the tissues and just 
um, and help it in both of those respects. Does it help before menopause? Yes, kind of along those same lines. Um, it's not just for that. It's, it's awesome for menopausal symptoms, um, but it's, it's also great for, it's great for postpartum, for tightening of the internal canal. And then externally, it, you know, it really does not matter. If you have any laxity or elongation of the labia that bothers you, whether it be you know, the way it looks in bathing suits or um, leggings, or if you know, I've, I've had patients report you know, if they walk a lot, um, like if they're you know, walking around the mall or something like that, they can feel um, pinching of the area, things like that that can be uncomfortable. So this could, this could help with that. Um, there are some, some patients that will ask you know, about this versus labiaplasty for that issue. Yes, there probably is a point where it would be better for you to just do a labiaplasty, but that doesn't mean you know that that you can't do this. So again, it just comes down to the patient preference on downtime and and things like that, because obviously labiaplasty is a surgical procedure and has a little bit more downtime. So um, there may be you know a case where I would recommend labiaplasty, but if that's not something you're ready for, this can definitely be something in the meantime to help you out in that respect. That's what's nice about our office is that we have you know, board certified plastic surgeon that's available for the labiaplasty and then we have something like this that's a little bit less invasive and done in office. And it looks like a couple more people are typing so let me get these questions up. Side effects of treatment. Um, Really, pretty much what we've discussed already with the swelling um, and the redness, and then that little bit of what we call exudate, basically just that buildup or film on the skin. Um, of course, things that we look out for, you know, uh, over the first couple weeks after treatment, you're always monitoring for infection, especially in that area that may be hard to keep, you know, from being damp and things like that. Um, really, that's that's it. It's in you know long term. If if we were choosing the improper settings and things like that, there's you know maybe a chance for scarring, things like that. But honestly, we're so so safe here. We cho try to choose you know s settings that will get you results, but not to the point of danger or leading to adverse side effects like scarring and things like that. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to give you guys just a couple more minutes to type couple more seconds to type in some questions, see if that's answered, answered everything. Okay. I think these are probably the most common questions that I've gotten so far from patients. Um, so if you guys think of anything else, you feel free to call our office. Um, we've had some staff meetings, so I've tried to educate the whole staff on you know, the most common questions and what they need to know about the treatment, that sort of thing. And then, of course, if you're interested in hearing a little more in detail, you can set up a consultation with me. So thank you guys for attending, and um, hopefully you're as excited as we are about this treatment. <laughs>